Hello YouTubers, this is Brian again from Van and Solar Adventures and um, sorry, I, I'm going to post one more Energy Kodiak video. I know I got one criticism that I've been posting too many videos on the Kodiak, but I want to be honest in all my videos and not mislead people. And um, I, I have done some evaluation. I posted a video on connecting an external uh, 100 amp hour battery to the Kodiak, you can see the connections there, positive to positive, negative to negative. And uh, this is 1100 watt capacity, this has 1000 watt capacity. Now, I've I, I should have known this, I'm sorry I didn't really fully realize this. Part of doing the solar adventure is me learning. I didn't take a class for any of this, I'm just learning via the school of hard knocks. But anyways, um, this should have been obvious. So this has a lithium ion battery and it can achieve at least a state of discharge of at least 80% and not affect the battery life. However, when extended with an AGM battery, um, the AGM batteries, you really do not want to discharge below 50% or you will affect the life cycle <coughs> longevity of the battery. <coughs> And if he goes too low, you could ruin it. And these aren't cheap. I think I paid about 140 bucks, and this is one of the least expensive I could find. Good quality, deep cycle. It's the UB, UB12-1000. You can plug that in on Amazon. It's the same battery, I believe, that's in the Gold Zero Yeti 1250. It's the, it's the replacement for it. It's a true deep cycle, 100 amp hour battery, good battery. So here's the problem. I have this system at 11.29 volts, 11.29 volts. Now I've, I've got it plugged into 300 watts of solar, it's the beginning of the day today and it, it'll pretty much fully charge this system, but look at that, 11.29 volts, I've let my AGM battery go below uh, 12 volts, which I never want to do, I believe 12 volts is 50% state of discharge. <clears throat> so. So it's not a problem. It won't affect the life of the Kodiak because the lithium can be discharged down to 80% and no problem. Won't affect the life. But it will affect the life of this. So that's the problem. With the different chemistries, you will never really get the full benefit of the Kodiak when connected to an AGM because you can, you're always limited to uh, power from this. So... I may, what I may do is I may disconnect this from the Kodiak and plug it actually into my Yeti 1250. All of these batteries in the Yeti 1250 are all AGM 100 amp hour batteries. I, I, I believe it's 1250 watt hours, but 100 amp hours is, is uh, uh, um, you can expand it with 100 amp hours. And then those will all be AGM batteries. And I'll never have this issue where I have different chemistries of batteries connected all together. And that way I can evenly discharge. I'll have a longer state of discharge for the Gold Zero Yeti 1250 with three batteries. Yeah, I won't have anything hooked up to the Kodiak, which is a shame because it's got 600 watt of input capacity. This Yeti 1250, I believe, can only go up to about... Uh, something like 240 watts of solar input capacity with this Anderson pole port. So it's a shame this has 600 watts. And uh, I'm really hoping Energy will release a or a lithium ion battery pack uh, duplicate that's in here that you can expand this with. That way you have all the batteries of the same chemistry and you can discharge them all and have a long life cycle and you want a long life cycle because these are very expensive to invest in. So I'm going to think about this for a little bit, but I may disconnect this 12 volt battery, connect it to the Yeti 1250. I want it, and, and then this won't be connected to any external battery, which is fine because I bought this also to be portable. Uh, I truly use it as portable. Sometimes I bring it into my house, sometimes I bring it on my Class B RV, and it's a backup battery. You know, in case you have two, three shady days when you're camping. Uh, boom, this is another day, day and a half of power. And look, it's, it's only 20 pounds. It's a small form factor. Um, and I can charge it via a uh, 12 volt uh, from my car. Um, 
or when I have excess power during the day with the solar panels on my RV, I can charge it via AC power uh, during the day. Anyway, solar is awesome in RVs. You, if you don't have at least one 100 watt solar panel, you're you're kind of crazy if you like RVing. Even a simple 100 watt panel will will typically refill most most batteries. All right, so so I wanted to post a truthful video about my uh, review of expanding the uh, the uh, Kodiak with with the 12 volt battery. Uh, be careful if if you it, it will work. It will hook up. It will charge. It will discharge evenly. This 11.3 on the, on the Kodiak. That's the same state of discharge of this battery if I were to connect it right now. That's why I have my battery charger here. It, it also has a state of charge. And I can, I can, uh, <clears throat> in fact, I might show you that real quick. All right, I was going to show you real quick. Normally, it's exactly the same. So normally, the reading here, 11.3 is exactly the same as here. I've got my uh, battery charger hooked up. It's saying it's 11.1 versus 11.3. Normally, they're the same. Again, I have this at a very low state of discharge. I hope I have not damaged the battery. I'm going to charge it up today. Um, but basically, they're roughly equivalent, 11.1, 11.3. Uh, that's the, it's hooked up to solar, so I have solar going into it right now. So that could be affecting the readings as this transfers power to, to this. So anyways, quick review of the success or failure, depending on how you look at it. it it's really a success because it works. But you have to monitor your battery much more closely. Make sure it doesn't go, go below preferably 12 volts, um, which is the same because then you're wasting about 50% of the capacity of the energy. But if you monitor your battery more closely, uh, it is successful. And it has 600 watts of input. So if you have a huge amount of solar power, th this will only, the Yeti 1250 will only accept. Uh, I think 240 watts of input. This looks up 600 watts of input. So if you have a larger solar system, that might make a difference as well. All right, catch you later, people. Have a good day.